This is our regular meeting of our city council. And um, as you can see, we've got a lot on our regular agenda. And then in the finance part of it, we're gonna be um, going over April's results and then uh, a review of our general fund. So what I'd like to do this evening is go through all the other agenda items first and then uh, have time at the end of the meeting to go over the uh, April financial review and the general fund review. And with that, I know some of you have already been doing this, which I think is a great idea. You've been either sending emails to Aaron or Colin and, uh, and me as well. And I think we ought to let Aaron give us an overview of each department and the attached uh, detail sheets to go with them for a lot of the capital uh, expenditures and large expenditures. And then rather than get into the weeds too much on line item questions, if you've got questions, it would be good probably if you would uh, jot them down and continue to send those or call Aaron or call me uh, just in out of respect for everybody's time this evening. Uh, but if something comes up that's, you know, really uh, something that you really feel like you want an immediate response, certainly you can ask questions. I just think that it'll, it'll go smoother uh, if we give Aaron the amount of time he needs to <coughs> present the review and then uh, um, maybe ask questions directly to him. And as I said, I know some of you all have already been doing that, and that's probably gives you all some good background. Uh, to the uh, review. So with that said, um, we'll go into the first item on the agenda. Um, we have a bid tab for the uh, Kersalyn water tank project and uh, I'll let Jessica Filiatru um, go through that for us. Thank you, Mayor. Um, in this bid, Fiscal budget, we had painting of the Hersland water tank in the current budget, and we put that out for bid. And we had two bidders, Current Construction Services LLC and Utility Service Company Incorporated. And Current Construction is the low bidder at $393,500. And I recommend that the council approve Current Construction. Um, for their bid price. We've, they are the contractor that painted the Withrow Court tank and I believe the Fairgrounds tank. They've done several of the tanks for us recently and we've been very, uh, very happy with their work. They generally do, uh, do a good job. They, we've also communicated with them on timing of this project and they are already working and able to mobilize once school lets out at Barstown, which this tank is located just immediately adjacent to the Barstown Elementary School. They're off of Templin Avenue. So they're able to mobilize after school's out and get the project completed before school initiates up in the fall. So that timeline works really well. And um, I hope that the council will, will authorize their award. Thank you, Jessica. Any, any questions? Uh, uh, Jessica, did you say the elementary or primary? Um, it may be the primary. It's the K through first. Pr or primary. 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 I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, primary school. Thank you. Jessica, is that, uh, is that inside maintenance and outside, correct? Correct. Correct. Um, that tank is does have lead paint in it. So we will have to curtain and they've got, I've already communicated with us that they have a special technique and the ability to mitigate that tank, that paint as they remove it, such that they don't have to, it's, it's not hazardous and they've kind of got a game plan associated with that and that's all included in their price. So that's also a good thing. Yeah. Do we have a logo that's going on this one on the outside? Yeah. We do. Um, the logo wasn't finalized at the time that we had uh, this go out to bid because there's just this springtime of year. The folks who normally do our layout was a little were a little bit behind. But it's going to be a very similar logo as what's on the other tanks. I'm only going to verify. I was considering putting 
just a gold or a bourbon color band around the middle between the blue and the lighter color at the top of the tank. As long as that doesn't add any real additional cost to the logo, it's just a stencil. So the city's going to be paying directly for the stencil uh, and buying that directly. And I shouldn't be any additional cost to do that, but I'll verify what that is before. But it's going to be very similar to the design that's on the other tanks. So just everyone's just a little bit different, but still utilizing those logos and uh, incorporated trademarking that we've had done with the, the branding that the city did. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Okay, if not, I ask for a motion to approve the bid from Curran's construction as recommended by our city engineer. So, so moved, Mayor. All right, I think we've got Councilman Williams on the motion and Councilman Dones on the second. Any other yes. discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, Any opposed? Thank you. Okay, Jessica, you want to do the change order on the Public Works building project? It's not a very large one, but we have one. She needs to unmute. Maybe. I'm, I'm not Hi. on mute. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, you're right. These There are a couple of minor change orders that are uh, on this project and we're trying to just address those as those items come up and keep the project moving <coughs> on the table. The first dollar amount is for $2,070. And this was just to accommodate rewriting some of the duct work over the office areas that was showing in conflict. I believe it was with the sprinkler system. So I believe the plans were not especially clear on the elevations of the ductwork versus the sprinkler system. Might have been because we kind of went back and forth about whether we were going to move forward with sprinkling the building, um, but we were able to get that ductwork rerouted and, and continue to have the building sprinkled for that $2,070. Does not add any time to the project. The second item was once we got into finishing out, we're finishing out this building, we realized that the shop area itself did not have any coverings over the, the interior walls of the shop. So we were having just the exposed insulation. And because of the type of work that we do in there with mechanical art, welding, you know, those types of things, uh, we found that it's really necessary for us to go ahead and, and have some covering over that interior wall. So the, this, the next change order was for a total cost of $3,748.20 uh, to accommodate just putting an eight foot tall covering over the interior shop area. Um, they are asking for an additional three days to the overall contract. Some of that's just been material delivery, um, hate to say this as an excuse, but it's just been somewhat unreliable a little bit with COVID and shipping and timing. It kind of is what it is, but for three days, I don't think that that's going to be any issue and should not change what we're able to do with the building. So I recommend, I ask the council to approve these change orders and that total of $5,818.20. All right, thank you, Jessica. Anyone have any questions on these two change orders? Okay, uh, seeing none, uh, ask for a motion then to um, approve the change orders as requested for 58, 18 and 20 cents. I'll make that motion, Mayor. The motion for Councilman Hibbs, is there a second? I'll second, Mayor. All right, Councilwoman Hart on the second. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion's carried, thank you. All right, um, 
we have a donation request from the Barstown Nelson County Backpack Program, and Councilman Hibbs uh, is the sponsor of that. And I think you may have uh, a guest who is going to help speak to this request. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mayor. Um, a couple of years ago, I happened to meet a fantastic young woman who is um, all about helping uh, uh, children who are not getting supplementary uh, nutrition uh, be able to eat over the weekends. And that's Miss Angel Thompson, head of the Nelson County Backpack Program. And I brought her on here tonight to tell you a little bit about what uh, her program does and the need in the community. And uh, I asked her to speak to you guys to tell you a little bit more about what she does. Angel, are you on here? Yes, I'm here. Awesome. Go right ahead. My name, my name is Angel Thompson. I currently serve as the Director of Community Education. Um, the most significant program that I have underneath that umbrella is known as the Backpack Program, and most people know me as the Backpack Lady. We know that our children eat when they have breakfast and lunch available at school, but there's no guarantees when they are away. So what my program does is we partner with Feed America and every Friday we send a bag of food home. Um, we serve about three to 400 children on a regular basis. They get 14 to 16 items within a bag. And they are a very different substance within the bag, um, able to feed them while they're away from school. Um, it's an honor to serve and work within this program. And it's an even larger honor to be able to actually serve the people in Nelson County. Underneath the backpack program, I have 21 schools. That includes everything from our county and city schools as well. And we would appreciate any support or help that we are able to get to continue to feed the children within our community. Okay, Councilman Hibbs, would you got anything to add to that? Uh, yes, Mayor. Just uh, uh, Angel does a fantastic job. She has such a passion for these uh, children in our community, and I know COVID struck a lot of businesses. We focused on those over the last year, but uh, this is something kind of near and dear to me too. Um, I want to make sure the kids in our community are well taken care of, and I'd like to ask the council if they wouldn't mind to sponsor this three thousand dollar donation for the backpack program. Thank you, Frank. Um, any of the council members have any questions of Angel or Frank on this? As you can see, we've got about $6,000 remaining in our community development funds for the year. So we've got this month and next month to go, but we do have funds to cover this request. So if there's no questions, then I guess uh, council Mayor, I'll heads. Make motion, I'll make a motion to approve the Three thousand dollar donation for the for the Nelson County Backpack Program. All right, thank you, Councilman Shekels. Is there a second? I'll second it. All right, we have a second by Councilman Williams. Any other discussion? Seeing none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is carried. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Angel. You. Thank you for all your hard work with our school kids in this program. Thank you. Okay, we'll move on then to our uh, minutes of our April 27th council meeting. If there's no additions or corrections, we can approve them by unanimous consent. All right. Um, We'll move on then. We're going to wait till the end on the finance report. So we'll move to uh, second readings. We have a uh, second reading on B2021-04 uh, under employment, Chapter 35 Employment Policies Classification and Compensation Plan and ask our city attorney, Audrey Hayden, if she would um, read this uh, change. Thank you, Mayor. Ordinance B-2021-04, an ordinance amending and adopting as amended an ordinance creating the classification and compensation plan. The City Council of the City of Bardstown, Kentucky does hereby ordain that the following amendments be made to Chapter 35 Employment Policies of the City of Bardstown's Municipal Code of Ordinances. Number of positions. Strike one, add zero. 
Parks and Recreation Department. Title, Grounds Maintenance Superintendent, Grade 109. Number of positions, strike two, add three. Title, Maintenance Worker 2, Rec, Grade 104. All ordinances in conflict herewith are repealed to the extent of such conflict. This ordinance shall be in full force and effect immediately upon its passage, approval, and publication as required by law. Thank you, Audrey. Um, this is a second reading then. Uh, Greg talked to this last, at the last meeting on the reasoning for this. We're going to hopefully groom someone to become the grounds superintendent from these uh, workers we've just uh, added. So hopefully we'll be adding that position back later uh, in time once they've had enough experience. So uh, if I could, I need a motion then on the second reading to approve ordinance B-2021-04. So moved, Mayor. Motion by Councilwoman Hart. Is there a second? A second that, sir. All right, motion by, second by Councilman Buckman. Any other discussion? Since this is the second reading, I'll ask for each one of you to vote. All in favor say it. A, and then all opposed nay. So starting with um, Councilman Hibbs. Aye. Councilwoman Hart. Aye. Councilman Buckman. Aye. Councilman Williams. Aye. Councilman Shekels. Aye. Councilman Dones. Aye. All right, thank you. Motion's carried. All right, we'll move on then to um, another second reading on B2021-05 under wastewater. And I'll have Audrey read that one as well. Thank you. Ordinance number B2021-05, an ordinance amending and adopting as amended an ordinance relating to chapter 53, wastewater of the city of Bardstown's code of ordinances. The city council of the city of Bardstown, Kentucky does hereby ordain that the following amendments be made to chapter 53, wastewater section 53.119, truckers discharge fees of the city of Bardstown's municipal code of ordinances. This chapter 53, section 119, truckers discharge fees. The annual fee for a sewer trucker's discharge permit is $100. Truckers who haul septic tank sludge and dump in the city system shall be charged strike 16, add $78 per load for up to 1,000 gallons and strike $1.60, add $7.80 per 100 gallons for all over 1,000 gallons per load. All trucks shall be considered to be fully loaded for the purpose of assessing charges. All ordinances in conflict herewith are repealed to the extent of such conflict. This ordinance shall be in full force and effect immediately upon its passage, approval, and publication as required by law. All right, thank you, Audrey. Um, then I need a motion then to, on, for a second reading, to approve ordinance number B2021-05, please. So move, Mayor. A motion by Councilman Gibbs. Is there a second? I'll second, Mayor. All right, we have a second by Councilman Doan. <clears throat> Any discussion? As you remember, Jessica went over this last meeting on the reasoning and how we hadn't raised these rates for a number of years and actually cost us a lot more to, to process this than we've been collecting for some time. So we're just trying to get back to uh, similar charges that surrounding towns are doing for the same services. So that's the reason behind this. Any other discussion? Okay, this is second reading. So we'll go individual votes. Uh, all in favor of signify by saying aye. <clears throat> Starting with Councilman Dones. Aye. Councilman Shekels. Aye. Councilman Williams. Aye. Councilman Buckman. Aye. Councilwoman Hart? Aye. And Councilman Hibbs? Aye. All right. Motion is carried. Thank you all. All right. We'll go on down then to um, any, any of the committees or staff members that don't have agenda items have anything to bring before the council tonight? All right. Under new business, we'll go then to uh, 
uh, rural and municipal aid. Um, let me get to that. Um, Got my iPad's got to open back up. Sorry, give me a second. Okay. Um, each year, you know, we get a proportion of the uh, gas tax money back to us in the form of municipal aid from the state. So this is just an annual re resolution um, giving us the authority to enter into that agreement and uh, asserting that we would do it uh, according to the regulations that are required of the uh, city's use for these funds. Um, so if I could, I'd like to have someone introduce resolution R2021-04 and have our city attorney read it, please. Mayor, if that may be in order, I'd like to introduce resolution R2021-04 and ask our city attorney to read it in summary. Thank you. Audrey? Thank you. Resolution R2021-04, resolution adopting and approving the execution of a municipal aid co-op program contract between the incorporated city of Barstow and the Commonwealth of Kentucky Transportation Cabinet, Department of Rural and Municipal Aid, for the fiscal year beginning July 1st, 2021, as provided in the Kentucky Revised Statutes and accepting all streets referred to therein as being streets which are a part of the incorporated city of Bardstown. Whereas the City Council of the City of Bardstown, Kentucky does hereby accept all streets referred to in said contract as being city streets, which are a part of the incorporated city of Bardstown. And whereas the City Council of the City of Bardstown, Kentucky does hereby ratify and adopt all statements, representations, warranties, covenants, and agreements contained in said contract and does hereby accept said contract by such acceptance and, and by such acceptance agrees to all the terms and conditions stated there, therein stated. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Bardstown, Kentucky as follows. The mayor of the city of Bartown is hereby authorized and directed to sign said contract as set forth on behalf of the city council of Bartown and the city clerk of Bartown is hereby authorized and directed to certify thereto. Thank you, Audrey. Um, yeah, this this uh, municipal aid is typically a little over 200,000 and that's included in the line item we use for our paving. So I think I, we'll get to that here a little bit on the streets, but I think the paving's over 550,000 this year. This this is part of those funds that we use to pave our city streets. So it's good to get these monies each year from back in the state because our drivers here in Barstown pay the gas tax. So it's good to get some of that money back uh, to help us take care of our streets. So um, if I could, I need a uh, motion to approve the resolution R2021-04. I'll make that motion, Mayor. I think it was Councilman Buckman on the motion and Councilman Williams on the second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All aye. opposed? All right, resolution is carried. Thank you. And then we have an, another one on uh, Tower Automotive. Um, this one, just give you a little quick background. We already approved basically the, uh, the tax uh, credit, the tax abatement uh, back in 2017 when this project went to state for their incentives. Um, now we need to do this resolution um, to basically affirm to the state that we will, uh, now that the project's been completed, money's been spent, the jobs have been created, affirming to the state of our intent to uh, support the half percent credit on the 25 new jobs for the 10 year period. So that's sort of the background. Uh, we've done this, uh, I think the most recent one besides this was Orbis. And um, we've done this fairly often now with our incentive packages for these expansions and any new jobs that come from them. So it's just the 25 jobs. Um, 
and a half percent for the 10 years is rebated back to the company. So I could uh, get someone to introduce resolution 2021-05 and have Audrey read it for us, please. Mayor, Mayor, I'd be happy to introduce the resolution 2021-05 and, and ask our city attorney to please read the uh, resolution for us. Thank you, David. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, resolution 2021-05, a resolution approving the granting of inducements to Tower Automotive Operations USA 1 LLC for the purpose of attracting and retaining jobs to the KRS Chapter 154, Subsection 24. Whereas the City Council, the Council of the City of Bardstown, Kentucky, the city, finds that it is a legitimate public purpose of the city to undertake activities for the purpose of attack, attracting and retaining jobs for residents of this community. And whereas Tower Automotive is investing nearly $30 million in the expansion of its existing facility in Bardstown to increase production and warehouse space, including the purchase of additional equipment, and whereas the Kentucky General Assembly in 2009 enacted KRS 154 0.32-010 to 154.32-100, establishing the Kentucky Business Investment Program for the purpose of encouraging the development and expansion of the manufacturing, service, and technology industries in Kentucky. And whereas this program provides state inducements to businesses which locate in or remain in the Commonwealth, thus preserving and creating and preserving jobs for Kentuckians. And whereas this program encourages local governments to participate in these inducements for businesses within their jurisdiction, and whereas Tower Automotive is soliciting the city for support of its application under the Kentucky Business Investment Program under KRS 154.32.010 through 100, and whereas the city has expressed its willingness to support a 0.5% credit of the city's occupational tax on 25 new tax fee on 25 new jobs created by Tower Automotive as a as part of this economic development project for a 10 year period. Such credit applying only to new Kentucky resident jobs created by the project. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the City Council of the City of Bartown, Kentucky, as follows. Section one, that the City Council authorizes the credit of its occupational tax fees pursuant to KRS 154. 0.32.010 through 100, Tower Automotive Operations USA 1 LLC, and any subsequent assignees and approved affiliates thereof under the KBI program for and throughout a 10 year period, beginning from the effective date of this resolution. The credit for the occupational tax fee shall be equal to half a percent on the wages of 25 new resident employees of Tower Automotive created as part of this economic development project. Section two that the mayor and other appropriate officers and employees of the city are authorized and directed to execute, acknowledge, and deliver on behalf of the city any and all papers, instruments, certificates, affidavits, and other documents, and to do and cause to be done any and all acts necessary or proper for the granting of the inducements authorized by this resolution. Section three, this resolution shall become effective upon its passage and approval. Thank you, Audrey. Um, so if I could, I'd need to get a motion to approve this resolution 2021-05. So move, Mayor. All right, motion by Councilman Nose. Is there a second? Second, I'll second. I'm right. sorry, Bill. No problem. I think Bill might have got it. So second by Councilman Shekels. Any other discussion or questions? Uh, seeing none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Motion's carried. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is the uh, budget and annual report from our Barstow Nelson County Human Rights Commission. Uh, all is required of us this evening is, is to approve their budget and uh, I think you've got that in your um, packet there. And really the budget just shows as far as actual revenue projected is from the city and the county at this time. And they make up the difference with their donations and other activities. So if I could ask for y'all's uh, approval of uh, this budget for the- I got a question here, Mayor. For I got a question, Mayor, before you make, ask for a vote on this. 
they, they're showing a total, of course, the budget is just a projection naturally, but they show a total budget of 16,700 in expenses. And, but, uh, and 10,265 dollars in uh, revenue. Is this in kind that you're mentioning with the donations and stuff going to make up for that uh, $6,000? That's, that's my understanding, Bill. But now, if you want to get an answer uh, from Miss Baldy, we could table this and contact her directly. I, I didn't didn't think to ask her to be on here because we do this every year. But it usually balances every year, though. Or, or they, uh, if if you don't mind, I'd like to table this and give her a call tomorrow, just All to right. clarify this for my information. If you okay, if you don't mind. we can do that. All right. Is anyone else, is everybody else okay with tabling it until we get an answer on the, where the difference is going to come from? Right. And the yes. question I also had, Mayor, was on the web construction and web maintenance. That's, that's $4,500. It must be getting a new one or something. Okay. So, yeah, we'll ask them, ask, we can have her. Um, I'll, just, I'll call and ask for a little more clarification. And hopefully at the next council meeting, I can make a, I can make a presentation of, of what I find about that. Well, or we can have Mary join us. Uh, that will be that big. Yeah, either call. way. Either All right. way. All right, we'll table that and then move on to um, the mobile food vendor application for, I guess that's Plato's Fugo. Uh, I'm not an expert in Spanish, but... Um, you've got the application in front of you. And Gary, if you'd like to, Gary Little, the city clerk, make any comments on the application and everything is in order. Uh, yes, sir, Mayor, thank you. Uh, yes, we've been speaking with uh, Chavez Sanchez for a couple of weeks now about his startup trailer. This is a startup for a uh, Mexican food trailer. And he's already spoken with uh, Jan Johnston Crow several times about different locations that he'd like to set up at. Um, and he has her approval for most of those. And she signed the authorization for the business license and the mobile food permit, at, uh, as you can see. So um, he's turned in all of his paperwork. So he will be good um, to have a vote on today. I think there's, there's one thing we might uh, just get, get the council's uh, opinion on. Uh, is uh, the request from the uh, farmers market uh, is asked to allow allow them to uh, be there from I guess uh, on the days the farmers market opens until it closes as a vendor is, is that correct, Gary? Uh, yes, sir. Um, right now, by ordinance, mobile food vendors are not allowed on city property during normal hours, but. If they were part of the um, Farmers Market Vendors Association, that would be the exception, I guess, where they could participate. And uh, the location he requested is a, a good location with no traffic flow, where you come into the mar uh, market off of Flagge and go under the pavilion on the right by Cherry Alley. If he sets up right there, he's out of the flow of um, any kind of vehicle traffic. And um, so it's just whether or not he would be considered part of the market. I know I spoke with Angie Reed, who's also in charge of the Vendors Association, and she said that they'll try to also coordinate with him to use fresh produce that they produce for um, some of his ingredients. You know, eventually he'll be able to use tomatoes and lettuce and things like that. So it would kind of be part of the farmer's market. And uh, I just wanted to get, get bring the council up to speed on on uh, some other things with the mobile food vendor um, situation here in Barshan. Um, I think Mayor Sheckles uh, was in office when this first came into play with, Bill, do you remember if that was 2011 or 10 or 12? It's been close to 10 years since we did that and that was when I guess the first mobile vendor that came to town was the Crave Mobile from White Castle. So that's when the ordinance was adopted. And uh, 
Is that your memory of that it, bill? Yeah, we uh, we 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 uh, formed that ordinance where uh, any of these mobile vendors meeting the qualifications, like uh, this uh, uh, Mr. Sanchez did, that they were allowed to set up on private property, uh, not public, not public property, set up on private property, and they could stay there <clears throat> and sell their wares with up to fourteen days, and then they'd have to move. It. They couldn't. It couldn't be like a permanent. Uh, right. It couldn't be like a permanent fixture there, uh, because uh, I think the idea of, at the time was uh, mobile vendor didn't have the same uh, investment that a brick and mortar establishment did, so they shouldn't have all the total rights that they would have, uh, and so that's that was the reason with the the fourteen days stay in one spot and uh, move on like that. So. Uh, but it wasn't it wasn't allowed it wasn't allowed upon on city property or, unless it was involved in, as part of a festival or uh, like the Bourbon Festival or Butter McBay's Festival. If there were some if they were part of some kind of uh, organized festival, street concert or something of that nature, then they were allowed to set up during that time. So that's kind of how that came about. Okay, and what I was going to say is also, of course, now it's. 10 years later and this mobile food uh, vendor thing has you know, changed radically all, not just not, not just here in Bardstown and Nelson County, but you know, here in Kentucky and all over the country, there's more of them and a lot more varieties. And so uh, I've been approached by the Tourist Commission and Main Street and the Chamber. Uh, they want to do, they're, they're going to, they're going to kind of sponsor this. I think they're, they're look, looking at what other cities are doing in terms of uh, allowing these or regulating these. And uh, they think it, we need to update our current ordinance just because it's uh, been 10 years probably since it was put into effect and things have changed quite a bit. Uh, so I told them that they want to do the uh, legwork and research and then formally make a recommendation to the council that uh, we would certainly listen to their um, recommendations. So they're going to work on that. They're just now getting started on that. So we should hear back from them, um, I think, fairly soon on any recommendations they might have to improve the ordinance, not not to make it worse, obviously, but and improve it. So just give you that um, background um, because we'll, if we do allow um, – Mr. Sanchez to be a vendor at the farmer's market. I think he, he kind of qualifies, I guess, if the uh, farmer's market group uh, allows for him or other mobile food vendors to uh, open just during the time of their uh, farmer's market would not be uh, creating a problem uh, in the community, as best I can tell. But I want the council to uh, know about that and that's part of one of the places he'd like to uh, uh, do his uh, business along with the typical ones that are on private property he's got those identified as well at the farmer's market he's only going to be open during the hours that the farmer's market is in existence at, at this particular time am i correct yes that, gary is that your understanding uh, yes, that's correct. And then he's he's identified some of the other places that where they mostly have like save a lot, a few other businesses in town that have these, you know, on a regular basis. He he'll be going to those places as well. well should, Mayor, should, should should we wait until that ordinance is revised before they are able to set up in that farmers market? Well, that's that's, that's kind of my feeling. That's kind of my feeling right now. That's why we're having this discussion. I wanted to bring that up in front of y'all. We certainly we can approve his application, right? One thing, but then his request to do the farmers market. I thought I wanted the council to be up to that rather than myself and Gary make that decision on our own. Uh, yeah. If you notice in his application, he's going to be, he's put farmer's market, 
Barstown Builders Supply, Advanced Auto, Speedy Mart, and Save a Lot. So those, with the exception of the farmer's market, are private and meet the criteria. Correct. Uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, that's why people think. Go ahead. He, and also on this, he has to get a separate. Uh, he has to get a separate uh, approval application for each and every one of these when he does them. So tonight we can approve his um, uh, business to be in line with our requirements. And then the other ones, um, he has to submit an application for that, that in advance of each one, identify where he's going to be, what days he's going to be there, et cetera. But I wanted the council members to uh, weigh in on the farmer's market issue. Mayor, I guess he could always contact one of the adjoining property owners that are close to Farmer's Market and see if he could set up there until we rework our ordinance. Right. And, That's true. Uh, I think Randy and Sam uh, with Main Street and Tourism are, are working on this. I don't know how long that will happen, but uh, he's got other options, just like all the other mobile vendors, to operate just like they do now. So if you want to keep it the playing field the same, that that's fine with me. Well, I, I feel that way. I just say, I think that we should wait uh, until that's revised for him to be on the farmer's market property. I agree with Joe. I agree as well. I do also. All right, Same well here. then let's uh, then I'll, make a motion, do, I'll make a motion to approve uh, the Plato's Fuegos LSC of uh, mobile vendor license uh, with the exception of the uh, is a, a location in the farmer's market until there's more clarification made uh, with the revised ordinance. Okay. Well, we have a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second. All right, we have a second by Councilman Buckman, motion by Councilman Sheckles. Any other discussion? All right. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All, all opposed? Motion's carried. All right. Any member of the council have anything to bring before the council this evening? Mayor, if I may, could I give a quick update on nail care, please? Yes. I, it's been a while since I've updated everyone. Um, wanted to let you know that we have incorporated uh, nail care. We are working on our 501c3. We are in the process of exploring the option of hiring a part-time position, uh, hopefully by the end of the year. We do have our own Facebook page up and going. Matt Gordon with PLG created that, and he is planning on running a logo contest for um, our students to come up with a logo for nail care. We continue to monitor the stats. Um, call our first responders go on are up, and the deaths by overdose are up, unfortunately. Uh, the first quarter of 2020, we had three deaths in Nelson County due to overdose. And in 2021, we had nine. So this problem is not getting any better. So we need to continue to work at it. We are still working on forming the QRT. Um, nail care initiated the uh, Take Back Day, which was a national day on April the 24th with the Bardstown Police Department and certainly appreciate their cooperation and willingness to do this. And on that day, it, over a four hour period, they collected 10.3 pounds of drugs to get those off the streets. We also initiated um, Officer Tom Blair, went out into our local high schools. He's visited three of the four within the last week and a half to take the marijuana goggles and the beer goggles for the students to uh, try on and demonstrate what impairment does to you. And I attended one of those sessions. It was very informative. Also, Officer Blair did a great job with all the students. We have finalized our script for our play, which is called Fire Pit. 
Um, we have someone in the city schools, Lance Blanford, kind of working on some professional development for our teachers and administration, which we feel is necessary before we go into the schools to perform the play so that the teachers can be uh, equipped to answer any questions they may get after the students see the play. And we hope to present that in our area schools during Red Ribbon Week, which is October the 23rd through the 31st. We have used our first 100 drug litter kits, uh, spreading those out in the county. And we are in the process of putting together another 100 for use there. We are still working on getting the One Stop Resource Center up and going. To date, we have 13 different entities interested in uh, setting up a booth at that. And we have now involved uh, the city of New Haven in our organization. Mayor Cecil and Chuck Brothers from New Haven are attending. And I'm still waiting until uh, Jody gets a little more comfortable in Bloomfield to reach out to him to get them involved as well. So in a nutshell, that's what we have going on. Okay, thank you, Betty. Good report and good work on behalf of our community. Thank you. Um, and we've got uh, some cemetery deeds. We have, uh, well, excuse me, does any other council members have anything else to add this evening? Okay. Then we'll move to cemetery deeds. We've got Barbara Edwards, Ada Logan, Alan Cooper, and Megan Carlton, each purchasing one grave site. And then Susan Cooper and Joseph and Barbara Wilcox uh, purchasing three grave sites each. We can approve them by unanimous consent. I don't really have anything to update uh, on because we're going to be moving into our finance report and working session. Um, this will probably take, you know, another half an hour or so. Does anybody do we need to take a break? for five minutes and come back or you all just want to keep on moving on? I'm fine to keep going. Uh, I'm fine. Since we're all home, Mayor, we keep on going. <laughs> I'm uh, fine as well. <laughs> I'm in my office. But I, I guess I, if I need to excuse myself, I will. All right, let's move on then. Uh, I'll call on Aaron Bowles to do our, let's do our April finance with review first and then go into the budget. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll try to keep this brief so we can just get into the budget. Uh, I didn't want to I didn't want to get behind though and uh, miss a month uh, waiting waiting through budget sessions. So uh, general funds call $653,000 of revenue for the month. Uh, occupational ex license fees are running uh, they came in at about 270,000. They're at 95.5% of budget already this year. So we're at four and a half million. I'm projecting um, that to continue to go up uh, between net profits and occupational license fees. I'd expect to see about $5.3 million uh, come in through the remainder of this year. So net profits are looking a lot better. Um, we received almost $267,000 this month. Uh, that budget line um, is about 85% of budget. So uh, uh, that's looking good to come in. We still uh, are, I think, still receiving some and uh, she still has quite a bit of work to go through uh, that came in in April. So uh, we should be hopefully on target for uh, net profit revenue. Um, Year-to-date revenue, we're running at 87.5% of budget. It's very good, uh, about $10.4 million uh, in the general fund. Expenses are looking good also. Uh, they're running around 76% of budget for the year. Uh, we spent a total of $630,000 last month, most of that going into salaries and benefits. Um, to just some of the other Larger items coming out of the general fund. We uh, had two police cruisers that we purchased. Uh, those were all budgeted, of course. Uh, the public works building is still coming along with uh, invoices, uh, about 47,000 of that attributed to the street department. 
And then we had some fourth quarter contribution payments that go out to uh, like Main Street, uh, Chamber, uh, NC, the BIDC, those, those types of uh, groups. We pay those on a quarterly basis. So uh, combined utilities, revenue came in $3.5 million for the month. Of that 86% was service charges related to water, electric, cable services. Uh, some other things of note there, um, we had an insurance check for, uh, I noted electric insurance recovery. We had a, a boom truck that got rear ended back in January and we finally got the insurance payout on that. It was $23,000 there. Uh, we had uh, most of our investments for the combined utilities uh, all matured So in April. So all of the uh, interest posted there. So we have $21,606 of investment interest income post. Uh, year to date revenue, are running about 72% of budget, uh, uh, right around just under $33 million uh, for the year. Expenses came in uh, right around $4 million for the month. Uh, some of the larger items, of course, are electric purchase for resale, uh, $955,000. Uh, some sewer construction projects continue. Uh, that's the Rowan Creek and the uh, pump station projects. They were uh, about $894,000 last month. Uh, cable affiliate fees are up a little bit uh, just after those uh, contract negotiations, about $558,000 for the month of April. Um, bad debt expense is up as we continue. We waited a while through COVID to uh, write off bad debt and submit that to the credit clearing house. Uh, just with COVID going on and all the other restrictions we had, uh, I didn't feel it was uh, appropriate, I guess, to continue to write off bad debt and send that on. So uh, we've been catching up some uh, accounts and sending those off to collections uh, for the past several months. So we're, we're should be uh, just about caught up in getting uh, those submitted to our credit clearing house. Uh, on a good note, though, we are seeing improved collections and uh, improvements on our delinquencies throughout the combined utilities. Uh, with the stimulus money coming in, I think a lot of people are uh, paying down those bad debts and uh, uh, trying to get caught up on all their bills. So we have seen some reduction there. Your day expenditures are running about 73% of budget uh, or $35.3 million on expenses. Again, uh, as we've discussed in the past, those are slightly under where we would like to see. And that's just mainly attributable to those larger projects um, that aren't fully complete. Um, so there's quite a bit of revenue, quite a bit of expense left there in those budget lines. Uh, cash and investments, there was quite a bit of movement last month. Um, uh, the cash balance decreased $5.3 million, but uh, almost all of that was attributed to moving some excess cash balances out into investment vehicles uh, with a bound credit union and uh, a few things at uh, Wilson Muir Bank. So the general fund operating, it grew $272,000 uh, to a total of $6.1 million in cash. Um, the combined utilities is what the one that decreased it, uh, went down to about $2.8 million. Uh, of that decrease though, uh, $3.3 million was new investments uh, uh, for CD, just to, again, try to get some extra income off that excess cash. Um, so investment totals are up $4.6 million for the month. Uh, they're right around $12.3 million in investments. Uh, yields have <laughs> tightened up quite a bit. Uh, we, were, we were averaging about 2% on our CDs uh, and that's dropped to around 0.8%. So uh, I shortened everything up. Uh, all of our CDs and investments are 13 months or less. So hopefully as the economy improves and maybe we can get some 
relief on rates and uh, see some some of those yields climb back up, uh, we'll be able to reinvest at a higher rate. But uh, I'm keeping it as short as possible just to keep it as fluid as possible. Any questions on that? Anyone have any questions? As I said, the big news, I guess, is you can see in the cash position, Aaron just moved quite a bit of it from just sitting in cash to some uh, CDs. So that was just the major change, really. So there's no other questions on the April financials, then we can move into the uh, budget review. This will be the general fund this evening. So you've got that in front of you. I'll, like I said earlier, I'll let Aaron kind of just give an overview of each department and uh, with some highlights, I think would be the main thing of interest to most people, of the big news. And then uh, if y'all do have questions or whatever, continue to reach out to Aaron, either email him or call him or myself if you need to. <clears throat> but if you got a question that you really feel like you want to ask, certainly do so this evening. So Aaron, I'll let you take it away. Okay. Uh, if you compare our budget for FY22 to FY21, the actual ordained budget passed uh, last year, we're really relatively flat. Um, each revenue and expenses are up roughly a half percent uh, over that over that budget. Uh, however, if you however if you remember that FY21 budget included uh, quite a bit of revenue from the CARES Act, so. If you back out uh, that CARES Act money and those expenses, um, remove those kind of one-off items, our revenue growth is about 5.7% uh, and expenses are growing about 6% over FY21. Um, as you can see on that summary page, our net revenue that I've left for the general fund is $225,000 of net revenue that's at roughly 2% of our total revenue that's going to go back into reserves. Um, and just as before we get into the department, each department, just uh, kind of across the board, uh, we have a two and a half percent increase in salaries uh, that's going to take effect during FY22. Um, that's a little bit more, that's on par with exactly what we did last year and a little bit more than uh, what the uh, Department of Local, Local Government calculated uh, as, a, as a cost of living raise. Um, retirement costs are up, uh, non-hazardous employees, uh, that contribution rate's gone up 2.81% to 26.9 cents on the dollar for a non-hazardous employee. Hazardous employees is a little bit worse. Uh, it's up 4.75%. So for every hazardous employee we're paying, every dollar we pay them, we have to contribute 44.33% 44.33 cents on that dollar to the uh, retirement fund. And again, those are scheduled to continue to rise. Uh, 2024, I think, is whenever it maxes out for hazardous employees, and that will be around 50% just over 50%, so roughly half their pay, we have to contribute back into the retirement system. Uh, and it will hold steady around 49% for several years. And we don't see relief until fiscal year 2050. So we've got quite a long ways to go with this, with these high retirement contribution rates. Uh, so, but uh, again, a little bit different than what they had. They had it spiking up really high and then dropping down really fast, but they've, they've changed it to where they've extended it out uh, over over that long period of time. Uh, healthcare costs, um, again, these are estimates. I We haven't had our meeting with uh, Medvin yet, our, our insurance provider. Um, so I'm, I, what I've done with each department is just averaged uh, FY19, 20 actuals, and then estimated projections for FY21. So I've taken that three-year average and, and budgeted that for each department. 
Um, and it, the main the main expense uh, for the general fund, 55% of the $11 million in expenses uh, is going to salary benefits, retirement, and health care and other payroll related items. So that's quite a big, quite a bit, uh, quite a big portion of, of the expenses of the general fund just goes to strictly salaries. All right, so if we move on, scroll down into the finance department, that's, I put that one first because that's where all the money comes from. So we'll, we'll talk about where the money's coming from uh, and then we will get into where the money's being spent. So in the finance department, uh, the first line, property taxes, uh, I've calculated roughly 3% growth there. Uh, still, that's relatively conservative. Um, we should see, we had quite a big spike this year, uh, but typically we see a 3% growth. Uh, down into the bank franchise taxes, uh, I've just calculated that in average growth there. I do expect that to come in higher. Again, with all the stimulus money that's come back, uh, the banks are bound to have quite a bit more on hand uh, that they'll be uh, paying that bank franchise tax on. Uh, the occupational license fees and net profits. Uh, I've stayed relatively conservative on this. Um, I'm calculating about a 3.4% increase over uh, my estimated FY21 uh, revenue in these lines. Uh, FY20, we saw 6.5%. FY21, I'm estimating about 3.6% increase or growth there. So I stayed relatively conservative here. Um, I, I think we'll we'll see more, but uh, just a couple of areas of concern. You know, Barstown's economy is is booming, as noted. I mean, you go anywhere, you can't find a parking spot downtown. Uh, you're waiting forever at every restaurant. Uh, so there's a lot of activity in town, but um, I'm keeping it conservative just due to the fact that. You know, as you noted, some of the supply chain um, issues happening. I, I don't know how that's going to affect our local factories. Uh, it may have already started affecting some of them, but as that continues on and and, and dwindles down to, to the local economy, uh, that could have a significant impact if they had to close down <clears throat> uh, due to production cuts and also labor issues um, that are happening throughout the county. I think uh, lots of restaurants are having trouble finding employees and in turn are changing their hours, uh, not opening until later in the day when they can have employees. So again, all that affects net profits and then affects occupational license fees. Because if they're not working, they're not getting paid and we're not collecting that occupational license fees. So again, I try to stay relatively conservative. Um, the total Occupational license and net profits revenue uh, is $6.55 million for next year. Um, keep going down the line there, restaurant tax, that again is an in and out. Uh, that's an estimated, I haven't seen uh, tourism budget yet. So that could fluctuate, but that is directly offset by an, an expense line item uh, down below. Salaries and wages in the finance, you'll see quite a big bump. I found an employee allocation error, uh, so I'm correcting that. I had uh, an employee that was being spread, her the cost of her salary was being spread across multiple departments, but she is strictly a uh, finance employee, and that's all she does. Um, 5340, uh, my software line, is up a little bit. Uh, again, we have that new occupational license fee software. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive and costs on a monthly basis rather than a quarterly basis. Uh, and it is a cloud-based platform, so it uh, it costs a little bit more for that. Um, and then we are in the process of trying to implement an upgraded utility billing uh, software, same company, uh, just their newer product version and we were lucky enough that uh, back when Mike Abel was here, he had locked in a contract price for that 
uh, software. So we are locked in at a very cheap rate uh, and getting a substantially better product. Probably not the one that everybody wants, but it is uh, much better than what we have. So I'm looking forward to implementing that over this uh, coming year. Uh, professional and legal accounting down on line 6140. Uh, that's up quite a bit. Uh, we got $30,000 in audit fees coming up next year. Uh, increased legal fees can uh, continue to come in. And then we have a wage study um, that uh, Greg has implemented. And I put the entire cost of, into the finance department for um, the general fund portion of that program. Uh, that's it for finance. If anybody has any questions, let me know. Uh, moving on down into administration. Um, line 4420, you'll see quite a big decrease. Uh, that is where all the CARES money went to um, in those prior years. So uh, that's going back to a normal level there of $10,000. And, and that 10000 is attributed to historic preservation grants that Roche writes. Uh, and it's directly offset by an expense uh, down on line 6100. Um, in line 4690, the miscellaneous revenue, uh, that was pretty high if you saw back in FY21, um, or FY20, sorry. Uh, that line is where when we had all the masks for sale uh, and we sold quite a, quite a bit there at the end of fiscal year 20. Um, that's where all that revenue came from, from the mask sales. Not much really to discuss in the administration budget. It's pretty flat overall. Uh, if you get down into line 6020, I failed to include it and I, I can email it to each of you, but line 6020, that is our uh, local grant contributions where we're supporting Main Street, uh, the chamber, uh, NC to BIDC, uh, those, those core like contributions. Uh, one that we did add in there, and I don't, the mayor may want to speak to this after a while, um, but uh, we are joining the county and partners uh, to support uh, the Meals from the Heart program uh, down at the, I believe the Bread for Life or the Food Pantry. Uh, we're going to be submitting uh, $80,000 to them and then uh, the county's going to pick up another eighty thousand dollars to help support that program, uh, as their funding, I believe, has uh, run out for that program. Yeah, let me speak to that just a second, uh, Aaron. Yeah, that program, as you all know, feeds uh, between one hundred and one hundred and twenty seniors and shut-ins uh, with five meals a week. Um, it's been funded by a foundation, a local foundation. Uh, for almost four years now, their commitment was really only three years. So the foundation has put uh, St. Vincent de Paul and the Bread for Life uh, food pantry on notice that they want to phase out of this. So uh, we've met with them. We've talked with uh, Ms. Hoban with the Bread for Life food pantry. They don't have any funding for this to take this on. Uh, I spoke with Lincoln Trail. They do feed some people here in uh, Nelson County uh, on a different program. It's a federally funded program. Lincoln Trail does not have the funds to take this on. So it's a very, very important service for our seniors and shut-ins that don't have uh, access to getting out. Um, it's also a very... Uh, important safety issue and quality of life issue for these people. If you talk to the volunteers that um, deliver these meals, you can imagine for some of these people, that's the only face they see that day or every few days. So it's a very important service. So um, we've worked out uh, with the, the, uh, tr or the uh, foundation that they wouldn't abandon, abandon it 100% if the city and the county could come up with 160,000 
uh, between us that they would cover the balance. Uh, the, the, the project actually runs over 200,000 a year. So I felt like this was a, a figure that we could afford. And I think Judge Watts is going to make the same recommendation to the fiscal court. So I hope that you all would join me in thinking that this was a very uh, important uh, uh, program and um, really, really provides a quality of life uh, and nutrition for people who wouldn't be getting it otherwise. All right. Um, to keep going down on administration line 6030, the, the community development grants, we've allocated $40,000. Uh, that's again, just general donation requests that we receive throughout the year. So uh, that will cover those. That's down a little bit over prior years. And, and those were up really just because of COVID, um, utilizing some of those that CARES Act money to help um, support uh, some of the other organizations within the community. Um, line 6100, uh, that is um, historical preservation expenses. Um, normally that would again be a direct offset of uh, the revenue in line 4420. Um, it's up a little bit. Uh, Roche and the mayor have agreed to do an HRB regulation study. Uh, that's going to cost uh, just under $16,000 to get that done. Um, professional legal fees are up. Uh, and that's, again, just due to the ongoing litigation uh, that the city's involved in. Next on the list is Kobeck, uh, our building over on Muir Avenue. Uh, I don't have much to say here. It's pretty flat over years. Uh, we've been we've improved the, the bottom line a little bit by reducing some of the, the maintenance and uh, other expenses there associated with that building. So uh, not too much to say on that one. Parks and Rec. Uh, is the next one in line. Uh, their part-time wages are up. He's got a total of three part-time employees now. Um, I believe that's more than what he's uh, normally had. And that's been really just to offset his uh, difficulty in finding a superintendent replacement uh, there. So uh, he's hired some additional part-time help to, to get them through. Uh, they do have a, a new person coming in uh, that was discussed in that compensation plan uh, during that ordinance. Uh, his office and technical supplies are up uh, quite a bit uh, at $50,000. That's line 5320. Uh, they're needing to uh, replace a, a trailer. And his equipment trailer is pretty dilapidated and about to fall apart, so he's needing a new one. So they can get that mower moved around. Uh, they're doing a, going to put in a shade structure up here uh, at the park right behind the city hall, uh, just to give parents some extra places to get out of the sun while their kids are on the zip line over there. Uh, and then just some other uh, uh, benches and, and things that they're needing to replace. Uh, down on line 6140, that line is uh, up quite a bit again also. That is, uh, we're gonna hire some a consultant to do some design work on the park that we purchased uh, this past year at 3rd and Broadway uh, to get some ideas on what we should do with that piece of land there. Uh, down into his capital expenditures there. Uh, He's allocated 7060 to build on line 7060 in buildings, $111,000. Uh, he's looking to do uh, replace the gym floor and then some ADA parking uh, that's need, needed on the side of the rec building. And we've asked him to kind of hold off on those projects. As you know, we're, we're in the midst of that study for uh, the new recreation center. So once the once the ideas come back with that uh, and we figure out exactly where we're going with this department, then uh, 
we'll continue on with that, with these two projects to get that uh, current rec center uh, improved a little bit, but uh, we're gonna hold off just until, until that study is complete. And uh, other capital there on line 7220, the technical equipment uh, is gonna add, uh, the zip line up here has been so popular, he's gonna add another zip line track uh, to continue on on that current one. And then he's gonna add a new zip line down at the community park uh, uh, there down past Hardy's. And some of the sheets after that just detail out those capital expenditures we just discussed there. The pool uh, back in back in operation this season. So um, he's overall revenue is going to be he thinks is, or we're expecting to be up quite a bit. I think people probably miss that uh, having a pool for over over a year. Or so we think attendance is going to be quite high. Uh, he's planning to have. Uh, the pool open extra hours uh, so that will help in pool admission revenue and then it also uh, increases our our wages that we're going to have to pay uh, to keep that place open a little bit more uh, we increased our chemicals uh, as you know or probably read chlorine costs and chlorine shortages are are abundant um, daniel thinks and has been informed by the vendor that um, liquid chlorine should be okay. Uh, I think it's the problem they're having is with the powder or the tablet style chlorine. So uh, hopefully we don't run into any issues during operation this season uh, with chlorine cuts there. Um, on into police, line 4490, you'll see that's gone down to zero. Uh, that was CARES grant money. What all that was. Your miscellaneous line. I know everybody's. <laughs> everybody always wondered what miscellaneous is. Uh, most of that is police reports, uh, the income that they receive. Salaries and wages are up a little bit. Um, we have completed our three year plan to implement a pay scale for uh, the regular police officers. And uh, we have, this year, we're going to implement an increase for the command staff. Uh, it will be a one-time one -time increase for them. Uh, we think it's well-deserved for them. Um, so you'll see that that line's increased a little bit. And then that also affects uh, some of the other lines below 5200 and uh, to some degree 5180. Uh, line 5340 is uh, what's going to be hitting that is some uh, maintenance on their, their body cam supplies and software, and then a caliber mobile cop program that they have. Uh, I believe that's, I believe that's in their vehicles. Um, Going down into the uh, capital expenditures for police on line 7060 in the buildings, they're gonna they're gonna complete their new property room that they have out on the uh, it's out on the uh, new fire department site. Uh, they have a building out there where they keep all their property. Uh, they're gonna put an HVAC system in to kind of get that into a temperature controlled area for some of the stuff that they have come in that where they need to and to have uh, kept in a temperature control area. So, uh, 7140 passenger vehicles, uh, they're going to get six new vehicles next year. Yeah, and Aaron, I just would add, um, you know, they had requested seven, but we cut that to six, and that helped offset. Uh, and of course, Chief Cressig and Joe Seeley are pretty good on these budgets. Uh, that uh, offset those increases uh, that were going to the command staff this year. So that was, uh, they understood how we had to make some cuts to offset that. So they lost two, they had two police cars they lost this year due to a total. So they are, uh, 
kind of running short on uh, vehicles that are up to uh, service, but uh, we cut it back from seven to six. Hey, Aaron, is that eighty nine ninety? Is that the is that the body cam cost for body cams? Uh, that is a, a a transfer that's been made into an equipment fund. I think for future use. Uh, uh, it's not a, that's not a, the transfer to the equipment from is not for body cam. You know, we, we actually incurred that expense for that entire operation, the body cam operation this fiscal year. Um, uh, any, any related body cam expenses are just going to be kind of maintenance wise as far as uh, support, software support maintenance on that body cam. So, so, so tell me again what 8990 is. It's a transfer into our equipment fund. So we have kind of an equipment reserve uh, that helps cover the costs of some of these vehicles. Um, if we if we have any major losses, uh, I don't know I, what the balance is, but um, they've been contributing $25,000 into that equipment fund for a long time. <laughs> I know that um, the fire, you'll see the same transfer in fire's budget. Uh, it's a little bit more, but that is actually paying off. Um, they actually withdrew, I believe, a bunch of money to pay for one of the trucks. I believe. I believe the equipment had enough fund had enough money to pay for possibly ladder one. Uh, so they've been paying that back uh, through that transfer. Well, I, I understood about the fire department. I, I just didn't. I wasn't worried about police, but okay. Um, the next pages are just uh, some detail of uh, the police line items and then some of the police uh, capital expenditures uh, we've already discussed. Uh, next department would be the fire department. Um, 4490 again. That's going to be that decrease there is from uh, the CARES CARES Act money, uh, not not being not being there for FY22. Um, contract service revenue. If you're wondering what that was, that would be revenue that we receive for fire protection that's outside of our service area. So, uh, like Nazareth Villages, uh, they pay us um, some revenue there to kind of have assured fire protection out there. Uh, miscellaneous revenue in the fire department, and that's typically CPR certification classes that they do for local businesses, uh, and they, they pay for those. Um, the salaries and wages line, again, here is up a little bit. Um, they've had a problem this year, actually the past three years of retaining firefighters. Um, and we, between Greg, myself, and then uh, the chief and the assistant chief, we've been looking at the most common places that our firefighters have been leaving us for and uh, studying their salaries. And uh, so we're proposing to do a, a one-time increase this year for our firefighters, just the main firefighters there, uh, to kind of bring them up to a more uh, a more, a better level, I guess, that would be closer to match uh, any of our uh, competing agencies to help uh, help retain those firefighters and, uh, and and keep those here, keep them here, because it's quite a bit of an investment whenever we hire first hire hire one a firefighter uh, between the uniforms and the training and then uh, and then to have one up and leave. Uh, over salary is uh, kind of disheartening. So we've allocated a one-time increase here for firefighters um, that will be affected July 1st. Aaron? Yes. Uh, which fire departments are we in competition with? Uh, Shively, Oklahoma. Uh, we've lost some over to Lexington. Um, E-Town, Danville. Campbellsville. Yeah. 
So uh, we've had quite a few over three years. Not all of them left because of money. I mean, you've got some people left firefighting altogether, but a pretty significant number. So that's what we've taken a look at these. Uh, and there's a lot of issues there too, Coach Rowe. Uh, you know, some of those are taxing districts. They have larger budgets than we do, you know, uh, so we're never going to compete 100%. And they also, some of them, the cities have uh, larger occupational taxes, but we did see where we need to get more competitive. So that's really the purpose here. Just like we did with the, uh, the police patrolmen uh, a few years ago, the same thing was happening. We were losing them to Sheriff's Department, uh, KSP, and other. And now we, we fixed that. And we've got a good staff there. So we think this will help us here with uh, our firefighters. Thank you. Uh, moving on down uh, in the fire's budget, uh, down into principal payments and interest expense, that's going to be our first payment on our new pumper truck. Uh, we expect delivery of that this fiscal year. Uh, so we'll, of course, have to make our first payment on a seven-year loan for that. Um, uh, we'll expect th that same expense for the next seven years uh, until it's paid off. So I believe Billy said they're hoping uh, to receive receive that bumper truck by February of 2022. And lastly, we have the street department. Uh, and I've already noted a change I'm going to have to make here. Um, uh, the first line, 4130, that's just... Uh, motor vehicle taxes that are collected by the clerks uh, and sent our way. Uh, they usually send those out quarterly. Uh, 4490, you'll notice that line's gone to uh, zero. Uh, that was a tap grant for uh, the sidewalk project. So now that that's complete, uh, we'll, we won't see more money on that. Uh, the line that I'll have to change is the 4990, the transfer from municipal aid fund. So uh, I had thought we were going to experience about a 3% decrease in funding from the state, but uh, we, I didn't see the uh, resolution in time to change this, but that will actually increase from 230, that will go up to 237, 632, basically. So, and again, that's just a direct offset of the full amount of money that we get uh, from the state and is spent down in line 7300. Uh, going down through their expenses, 5120 is up a little bit. Uh, we're going to hire another staff engineer to help Jessica out. She's, she's covered up, so <laughs> she needs some help. So she's going to get another staff engineer, and, and part of that person's salary will be allocated to street. Um, yes, you can. Some of the larger items you can see on on the detail pages that follow. Uh, let's get. We'll get into just some of the actual capital expenditures. Uh, the building 71, 70, 60, uh, That's again streets portion of the new shop uh, as that construction continues on into the next fiscal year. Um, uh, the big one there, seventy one eighty. Uh, $300,000 for a new street sweeper. Um, our current street sweeper is, uh, I think, had it. It's about to. I think, I think, Aaron, if I'm not mistaken, Ben told us that's probably a 15 year old piece of equipment now, I think. Maybe even older, maybe 2004. Yeah, I think we bought it used. <laughs> so it's, it's been, been put through the ringer. And uh, the way Jessica and Ben talked, some of our historic guttering, I think throughout the city, it can't reach, it can't clean up very well. So uh, they're looking at purchasing a, a very nice street sweeper. <laughs> uh, down into 7,300, uh, that's... Uh, Mostly uh, 560 of that is going to be just 
uh, street resurfacing throughout the community. Uh, but 35,000 of that is going to be allocated to help improve uh, a drainage situation over in Edgewood, um, where some water's uh, backing up, I believe, into people's yards. Um, 7301 uh, at 80, $81,000. 66 of that's going to be for um, some sidewalk improvements where uh, we've had a study done and we're going through and, and repairing some of those sidewalks that have buckled up due to roots or, or just whatever could have happened there. So they're going to go through and kind of shave those off and or actually re-pour if they have to, I'd imagine. Yeah, if you, uh, if you walk, you'll notice some of these areas, what we do is those places get milled a lot of times where these joints are and where the tree roots are pushing them up. So that's why it's a fairly expensive, but it's, uh, we did an inventory of more places that are in need of that this, this past year. And so uh, those of you that walk a lot, you see those places that we're just got to continue to do that because places just keep uh, happening as the sidewalks age and the roots do their number on them so it's a also a safety issue and keeps us out of getting sued over people tripping and falling so it's a, it's a necessary maintenance up, update and the last item the last capital expenditure there uh, one hundred and five thousand dollars uh that's for some lighting projects that are going to happen in edgewood uh, i believe they've uh, got a lot of dark areas uh, uh, that are unsafe for walkers, so we're gonna we're gonna look at uh, adding some lights out in that area for them. So that was a pretty quick overview of a lot of numbers. Um, as you guys continue to look through that uh, and have questions, feel free to contact me, uh, and I can give you some more detail. Um, again, I think I think it's a relatively conservative budget. Um, I believe we'll do better on the revenue than what I've projected, uh, but I wanted to keep it as conservative as possible just to uh, just to cover any any instances that might come up uh, to reduce our revenue. And, and the $225,000 cushion that we have is, is good too. So that's all I got. Well, thank you, Aaron. And the other thing I'd like to add, and I think the council knows this, is that you know, Aaron meets with the department heads first and gets their budgets and they have some discussion and then he and I go over the budget from each department and then we sit down again with each department head and go over the budgets and show them where we might have made cuts or where we've got questions and then and even in some cases we've sat down with some of these department heads twice uh, before the these are presented to the council, so um, they've not been rushed. And Aaron's spent a lot of time on these, and uh, this is his second year for putting the budget together. And uh, he's he's really picked up, and learned a lot, and um, he uh, he doesn't just make these numbers up from the seat of his pants. He takes a look back over several years and looks at trends, particularly on revenue and expenses and some of the larger items. So. Um, I feel really confident that this is a uh, this this part of our budget, this general fund, and I'm sure the utilities we've got most of that. We're working on those as we speak, so we plan to have those ready for you at our next meeting. Uh, of course, that's the much larger part of our budget, so it takes a little longer to get those put together. But we'll have them before our next meeting. So, but I do want to thank. Um, all the department heads and Aaron uh, on our general fund side for uh, a lot of work uh, at this point. So does any of the council have anything to ask or bring up at this point? Well, thank you all. I know we've had a longer evening, but I felt like it was good to do it this way rather than have some separate work sessions. And then we have to have two readings uh, in the month of June. So we should be in that position to do that at the end of this month after our next meeting. So uh, thank you all. And at this point, if there's nothing else, I'd ask for a motion for adjournment. 
So I'll move. move. I've got a motion for Councilman Williams. I think Councilman Hart on the second. All in favor say aye. 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 